before Marie formally introduces the the, the speaker of today, uh, who's Elaine Tavares. She's been with us uh, for, for all this time. I mean, and she's one of the organizers of these uh, seminars as well. So she doesn't really need all that introduction. But anyway, I would like to just uh, uh, um, talk to you very briefly and mainly to those to those that are joining now to explain uh, how these seminars uh, work. Uh, in fact, they are each one of the seminars is completely it's a standalone thing in the sense that if anyone misses one of our events, uh, the next one will we start from scratch because it's going to be a different topic. Uh, the idea here is that we have researchers. Uh, well, originally it was researchers from Latin America, but we, we have also included researchers from the United States. And sometimes we also have some Europeans uh, talking to us. Of course, in a program that happens in English, uh, those additions from people whose, let's say, mother tongue is English is very welcome. We are all here making an effort to understand each other, uh, speaking in English, when most of us have as their their mother language, either Spanish or Portuguese. But at the same time, of course, this is a, an attempt for us to keep improving in our um, possibility of, uh, you know, becoming better research researchers that communicate better what we're doing to other audiences uh, that usually have English as, uh, and in fact, for, for science in general, English is the, the, the main language, right? So this is the reason why we do this uh, in, in, in English. Uh, it allows us to, to have people from different countries together, but at the same time, it, it helps us to practice so that when we have to, mainly for the students who have to present papers in an international conference, that they already know what, it, what, what, what what's going to happen and that they, and, and they, they already a little more, let's say, um, well, they have a peace of mind that things will, will, will work out uh, fine, right? Um, we, we do have uh, a page on Moodle, uh, which we use for um, mainly, mainly, mainly so that the, the students can uh, have access to the material that will be uh, discussed in the seminars. And today we're, we're going to, to topic seven. So again, I know uh, Geraldo, who else, uh, all, all these guys who are joining us uh, uh, today, I think, uh, I don't know, Leandro, I think is, 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 is new here as well. And so people who are joining us today, we're in topic seven, but again, topic seven or topic one, is, it's just a sequence of seminars. We, we The plan of LACAIS, the Latin America and Caribbean Association for Information Systems, is to have seminars during the second semester. And then different schools will join, or students from different schools, and, and even researchers, professors, you'll see that many people join us here. They will join us depending on their convenience. But of course, whoever is taking this as a class as a, a, a course uh, has to do something more than simply attending, simply watching, right? And this is why we have this uh, Moodle page. So it is very important for students to make sure that they are able to get to this page. In fact, I will include in our chat chats there uh, the information uh, on how to get to Moodle because there you can share your thoughts with the other with other colleagues about uh, uh, about the topics that are being discussed. Uh, let me see what I included there. I included three links uh, for you there in in the in the chat. The first one, uh, well, the first one is, is 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 to register your attendance and at the same time to ensure that you get a certificate for this specific uh, seminar. No, okay. Then we have a second uh, link there on uh, uh, as well on on that is also in the chat. That is the Moodle link. For that link, if you've never gotten uh, inside the, the in our Moodle, it's, it's the UTFPR, the Tecnologica Federal do Paraná Moodle. So, of course, you will have to register there. So, uh, it's not that you're going to click on the link and, and it will show all the content for the, the, the research centers. It will probably say, oh, you're new here. So, enroll, uh, enroll yourself. You have to write your name, your email, find a password and whatever. And, and after you do that, then, uh, then it will ask you for an enrollment code for the research seminars. The enrollment code is very, very difficult so that no hacker accesses our, our research seminars, right? It's one, two, three, four, five, six, okay? So if you don't get that wrong, you will get into Moodle. If anyone has problems getting, problems getting into Moodle, send me a private message. Don't bombard, bombard everyone else in our WhatsApp group, right? Uh, send me a, a private message and I will try and, and, and help you with that. But it shouldn't be uh, any, uh, it shouldn't be difficult, it should be just uh, uh, clicking on the on the Moodle link and then filling in your, your registration. I know that many of you have already done that. And in fact, one of the things that I'm proud of is that we are finally getting that forum to work, all right? Uh, 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 several of you are uh, have, have read the, pa the paper that was assigned for today and have already uh, written down your comments. And then we have here a, a Google Calendar uh, link 
uh, well, you can't, you, you can't see it, but it's also, also in the chat, right? So you, you can't see my screen. I'm not sharing uh, that screen, but you have a link for a calendar. If you include that link, uh, and of course, if you use Google Calendar, you will have the calendar for the whole series of, uh, of research seminars. Uh, any changes that we do or anything will appear there. And it also shows other things, for example, as the link to the WhatsApp group and other, other information will be there. So it's important that you have, uh, uh, that, that you click in these different links in our chat here to make sure that you know everything that is that is happening here, right? Uh, as I told you, uh, uh, I, I, I found it uh, good that we already have, you know, for, for example, for every topic, we will have, as you probably see in the lower part of my, of my screen, there you have the, a, a forum, a discussion of the presented papers. So, for example, today when uh, Eleni presents uh, her uh, challenge for the, for, for the future of education brought uh, by the pandemic, right? Uh, uh, the idea was that uh, you could have already, and again, I'm talking about the students who are getting grades for this, right? So, if, if you want to, I mean, if you're going to get credits, you have to do this. Other researchers, people that are here just to, to be in contact with, uh, with, uh, with, with this community here, I mean, you don't have to, 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 to do that, but the students do, right? The students have to, to come every, every week. They will have to come to, to the forum. So the, the new ones that are arriving now, you have to come to the forum. Uh, there will always be a, a, a link there for the, the, the assignment of that week. For example, for today, of course, except for the ones that are new and, and just arrived, all of the others had already uh, the possibility of reading the paper on uh, by, by campus uh, at Ali. Uh, and uh, and then they are, they're already sharing some uh, ideas here. Okay, so for example, and and to make this easier, and, and considering that our language, Portuguese and Spanish, are sort of are similar enough, enough so that we understand each other, and that we have English as a bridge language as well. Uh, you feel free to write here in English, Spanish, or Portuguese. Right. Besides Google Traductor, Google Translator can help uh, uh, us understanding anything in, in a different language if we. But for example, we have here some. Uh, Ideas by 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 uh, Jaime, uh, and then we have uh, we, we already already had Alvaro write a few of the things that uh, again he, he already from from reading the paper uh, he already thought that were were interesting, uh, and then someone else Fabio uh, uh, you know has uh, has uh, mentioned a few things here. So the idea of the forum is that we we have a space for debating uh, the topics that 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 were discussed here, uh, and you have the possibility of uh, participating in this forum before the presentation, which means uh, uh, considering things that were uh, stated in the in the references in the in the papers that were assigned for a specific day, or you can do it also after uh, the presentation of the speaker. Of course, the, the speaker is usually the author of the paper or someone that who, who thought that that paper was so that that or paper or those those papers were important uh, for the topic being discussed. So uh, I, uh, I I again mainly for the students. Uh, you will be graded uh, based on your attendance and, and also based on your contribution to this collective. We, we last last week we, were, we discussed collective intelligence about this possibility of sharing your ideas and becoming smarter together with your colleagues by by seeing in which ways each one of us perceives uh, reality. Okay, so we, we already have uh, a lot of contributions here. This is great. Um, okay, so without further ado, uh, I will. Maybe ask uh, uh, Marie to, to to make the formal. We never, I mean, we Latin Americans are, are never very formal in our introductions. But anyway, uh, Marie and Eleni are department colleagues uh, at uh, the Federal do Rio de Janeiro. Uh, so Marie uh, could possibly uh, make a much better introduction uh, of Eleni to all of us. And uh, we look forward to, to Eleni's presentation. Thank you, Alexandre. Uh, thank you, everybody, for coming and, and, and discuss with us uh, our um, case. But uh, I, I, I know that Eleni will be not focused only in our case. So I think it, our case is just an example. And, and I'm sure that today we are going to have a, a very broad discussion and of this process that we have been living the last few, uh, almost two years. Uh, so let me try to make the official uh, formal introduction to my colleague. Eleni uh, Tavares that actually uh, uh, dismissed presentation, but uh, as I was in charge to do that, I, I will try to do my best here. Uh, well, Eleni is our is the dean of uh, Copiade. Uh, Copiade is, is our business school at UFRJ, uh, Federal University of Rio de Janeiro. She has a post, two postdoctoral researchers. Uh, one at University of Texas and at San Antonio, and the other at Université Marseille. 
She was also vice dean for the full-time MBA. Her line of research is on social construction of IT, especially on emerging technologies and on smart cities. As you can imagine, we work together in many projects and we are uh, engaged on this research seminar uh, together. We bring some students, our PhD students, some of them, I, well, now I lost them on the list, but I, I see some of them came and they try to, in some uh, moment, we try to uh, share with them this uh, experience. And I, I think that Eleni will share uh, as a dean and her experience and probably uh, as our with our community, how we can deal with this, we have to deal with this process during the pandemic uh, period. So, Eleni, please, the room is yours. Thank you very much, Marie. Thank you, Alexandre. Thank you guys for being here. I think we have a, a good discussion for today. I don't want to make this moment an institutional publicity of Copiade, so I'm not going to focus on the, the case that I, I shared with you. I'm going to talk about it, of course, but not to have the, this as the, the main focus. Uh, let me share the slides just a moment. So uh, let's have a chat about digital transformation and education. I think it's something that uh, has to do with management information systems. It's not exactly man management information systems, but I think we need uh, as an area to rethink about what we need to, to teach to our students, what we need to, uh, to do as a researcher to improve the digital transformation of the educational sector. Uh, our agenda for today is going to, to, to be focused on the trends on executive education because I believe that uh, when you, we discuss digital transformation in education, we need to just think about the, the forest and what is happening on a, on a bigger way. And we are going to discuss digital transformation at Copiagi, and it's just a digital transformation that is beginning Please, I don't consider that use Zoom to give classrooms is digital transformation. I think we need to 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 take to take the opportunities that is open for us. And I think the, the educational market is going to be really transformed by these possibilities. Uh, we are going after that to discuss about technology and new movements in education and to discuss the nature of work. I think uh, something is changing. We can see data science, we can think uh, the data that the data orientation needs to be really present on organizations today, and I believe that we must discuss our uh, hold as management information systems researchers to to foster this kind of change on the nature of work and to be prepared for that. And that by the end we're going to discuss the global talent competitive index uh, developed by INSEAD, and that has some good insights for us. So talking about the trends on executive education, I think we have two different groups. The guys that are starting their career, that are, they are looking to, to, to assimilate contents, to, to be inserted on an organization, to look like the others. They need to, to learn tools. They need a stamp on their curriculum with the brand of a, a good institution to, to foster their employability. Uh, and we have the other group, the, the guys that read achievement uh, a more hierarchical level, a more a bigger hierarchical level. And these guys thinking on differentiation, on the strategy, on innovation, on the vision that they have. So it's not about uh, being uh, similar to the others, but it's about being different from the others and start to differentiate. And we have uh, different networks uh, that helps these guys to learn, to, to discuss idea and to develop their organizations too. When we see the trends on, on the, that happens on executive education, I believe that it's changing a lot. It's changing a lot because uh, nowadays people not necessarily need a stamp or uh, a curator of content that needs to be really developed, but they can access content and knowledge wherever they are through different sources, so it's ch really changing the, the education. Uh, we have something that goes from the structured learning, a structure that you think when you, you develop a course, when you develop a program, when, when you see that uh, people need to, to have a kind of content that is really well organized and makes sense and things connect to each other, and you're going to develop people doing this kind of job. Uh, on the other hand, you also have 
uh, the time don't stop. You need to continue studying your whole life. You need to keep your education, your competences under development. So we are going to, to discuss kind, the kind of micro learning that can help uh, with this kind of development. And look, they are complementary. On, when you have time to study, when you have a good moment for do that, when you have a challenge on your organization, when you, you need to, to update and to refresh your mind, you're going to a structured learning, but your whole life you're going to have the micro learning uh, with you. And I, I have, and I have something in the middle here that I call the MBA in practice. We learn a lot in organizations. We do projects that are very challenging, very interesting, and we learn with this. When I, I got in touch with a consultancy group, when I got in touch with other executives, so it's a kind of MBA in practice. So I think that we have a spectrum that uh, will change depending on the moment that you have on your personal life. So it can be more fragmented, more integrated, but you have this. Uh, here have some examples of what I'm, I'm presenting. Sorry, because I did not uh, took the time to put our brands here. And I think it's better to, to do not do this kind of uh, association because sometimes I can have a, a, a misunderstanding on this. So it's better to do like that. So we have, for example, uh, the linkaging, something that we use to, to get up to date to, to news, LX, SXXW also on taxes that happen every year. They may be in practice, for example, when I get in touch with a consultancy group and some structured learning uh, developed here also presented. Specifically about technology, what are the need gaps that I can see? We have two kinds of gaps. I think one gap is related to the, the guys from IT, the technological area, and the other gaps are related to the non-IT guys. Let's see first the, what's happening to the technological guys. Uh, first of all, we're going to, to talk about we don't have a lot of persons uh, in the market available to organizations. Organizations are keep looking for these guys and cannot uh, fill all the places, the, all the rooms that they have for that, because we, we don't have sufficient uh, persons uh, well prepared to this position. Uh, so we have a blackout concern and investment in training because of these people is getting trained because I need to develop inside my organization this kind of training since I cannot hire. Uh, I need to transform the technici technician into a leader and someone that can understand about the business. And I had a prejudice that, that I believe that this guy could understand about business really well, really fast. And not, that's not real. Uh, I was with a misunderstanding about the business challenge that we have because these guys, they, are not, they don't have any kind of basis uh, for business. So we need to help these guys to really understand about business to give us good data and help us on our analysis. And we need to support the company for the technological transformation because companies need to plan their digital transformation and to see how is it aligned with their main objectives that they have, the strategic one. So you need also to help them to do that. When you go to the non-technological area, uh, we, we have the reformatting practice and strategy management in marketing, human resources, operations, in light of the technological renovation that we have in the organizations, in light of the digital transformation, we need to redesign process because since we are, we are inserting in organization new technologies, of course, process also needs to be redesigned. And we need to have technological reskilling for all levels. We see that a lot of people is being trained on R, on Python, on some languages that uh, starts to do a match or at least an approximation between these two, these two guys. So it's about technological literacy uh, that we are going to do this. And especially for the older audiences, we need to include them on this uh, discussion and to foster the, the idea of data orientation. Uh, when you talk about micro learning, I'm, going to, I'm talking about this kind of thing. I'm going to talk about the economies that people uh, read to, to get informed. I'm going to talk about podcasts that we heard. I'm going to talk about the mocks and the platforms, the digital platforms that offer short courses and this change, the executive education on a deeper way. When I'm talking about the practical, I'm going to talk about the projects at work, the contacts with consultants, 
with good suppliers, with company programs, with immersion promoted by work. And the third point, the structured learning, it's about uh, career on cold moments. Now things got uh, more, uh, more equilibrate here in my organization, so I can stop, I can have a break to study. Uh, I can also be demanding for, uh, I can also have a demand for oxygenation. I can, and I can realize that I need to change my mindset and so on. So we have, uh, we had already this kind of change uh, on 2019 on, on a very accelerated way, but something occurred that changed and accelerated things really fast. And that was the COVID-19 that uh, shaked us and put everybody to work on a different way. So discussing what Copiage did is something that is really interesting, at least for me, because I see that we had a plan to, to invest on three synchronous course. Uh, we really believe that, that it should be a, an interesting uh, target for us because we have a good brand, we needed to expand ourselves uh, nationally, but we are a boutique school at Rio de Janeiro, so uh, it would be an interesting possibility, but we were continuously postponing this investment because we really believe that we need to have a good infrastructure for that, we needed to have professors prepared for this, and the challenges were really uh, present for us. And the point is that we also had the market also uh, more used to have a kind of uh, learning that was not our speciality because we understood that the, the kind of the distance learning program that we used to have in Brazil were more associated to this, this asynchronous way. And at Copiage, we are based on discussion. We, have a school, we are a school that has a participant-centered method. We need to, to have the discussion as the, the spiritus of the, the classroom. So how can we bring the richness of the discussion to the classroom? Uh, what can we do about the networking? There is something that really worried us about the beginning. Of course, we can do network online. We are doing this here. We are getting, uh, we are developing our friendship when we meet every Wednesday to discuss topics. But it's not exactly the same way as we, we used to have. So we need to think about how to develop this. And it's a lot of challenges for teachers because I mean, use it to, to give my classes on a way. I know that it's uh, that it will work if I do this way. But when I go to an online uh, system, I don't know if the, the joke is going to work. I don't know if the, the discussion will happen as, as I'm used it to, to have. So I need to, 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 to see, to check. And that, what, that was what happened. Uh, so we started this, this discussion uh, on, a, on a very intensive way because the school was closed, as everybody, every school was, and we knew that we need to change uh, the, for the virtual environment very fast. But I was honestly expecting some resistance on professors because I believe that they would need some time to, to get used for this, but I think that the kind of urgency that the COVID-19 brought to us, uh, COVID-19, sorry. So it was really interesting to, to see how they assimilate this change and they uh, embrace the change on a very interesting way. Uh, for our students, it would be a mess to stop. They had just started the academic uh, year. Uh, their planning, their dreams were going to be canceled by this. Uh, for example, at the master degree, we have all the students that quit their, their jobs to start the course. So we might imagine that you quit your job, that you start a course, and one month later, everything is canceled. It's not possible. So we needed to, to move on. Uh, and if you did, did not do that, the dropout level of our courses would increase dramatically. It was a problem that we never had uh, Copiage don't have dropout, a high dropout level, it's just some personal situations and we were worried about this because it would bring some uh, losses for the structure of the school over the year. It would bring uh, losses for uh, research for the employees that we have, so we were really worried about this and we did not know by that time 
the, the size of the the wave that we had it was we did not know if it was a a short and shaking wave or if it was a tsunami as we had that took a long time and had an economical impact on on a deeper way so uh the the faculty on that moment uh was really confident about the quality of the staff that we have so we we focused on that and said let's take a look on what you can do. We look at the regulation, the Ministry of Education had a regulation that supported our change to, to the virtual platform. And we chose Zoom because it was a perfect match of what we have on the physical classrooms because we can, we can divide people on the breakout rooms. We can uh, order the discussion by hazing rents. Uh, we can have pools, for example. So it was really aligned uh, to what we do. Uh, so we started training professors and academic staff, and it was amazing because we started giving classes to each other and to, to adapt the platform and to check what works and what does not work. And people were informally sharing and with with the, their colleagues to, to help. And it was a faster, so fast that in 10 days we, are, we were ready to, to restart the classes. We adapt our tech code because it was not allowed, for example, to have a notebook on a classroom because it would disturb your concentration. You cannot use your cell phone, so we need to adapt our tech code. We create a start, uh, WhatsApp group to support each other and to, to solve uh, little problems that could occur on a fast way. Uh, we shared experience among colleagues, like I gave my first class, it was amazing, this worked, this, not, this did not work and people starting to celebrate each success. So it was really a good motivation for everybody. Uh, and we adapt our executive courses because for example, in executive education, we have eight hours for, class, for, for classes and it was really impossible for the guys that were uh, in the first line, in the front of the organization, uh, dealing with a big crisis over there to be eight hours in class. So we, we adapt our calendar, focus on quality and not necessarily on the respect to the calendar and to the date that we need to have and so on. We also had the problem of Zoom safety being, quest, being questioned on, on the press. Uh, I consulted the, the University of Texas in San Antonio that is the cybersecurity biggest research center in the United States. And they told me how to do that and assured that it was safe and we moved on. So let's open a little bit on our discussion, not just about copiage now, but let's open it to a, a broader uh, discussion. Until now, so far so good? Any questions? Perfect, Delaney. Perfect, very good. Yeah. Okay, so let's do it. Uh, first, I think we need to, to understand that innovations on our market brought uh, new players to the market. We have the traditional players that, of course, still have their value. Uh, we have a, a forecast from Harvard that told that 90% of the executive education schools are going to be closed in some years. I have this, day, this, this information by then, but I don't believe so. I believe that the, the good schools, and they are not 10%, they are, bigger than, they are a number bigger than that, uh, has uh, a role in our society. They have uh, their value. They add value by structuring the content, by understanding how can I educate? It's not about giving information, but it's education. How can I do that? But we have uh, spaces for new players that we need to consider. Digital platform have become a vector that bring uh, potential initiatives and new participants to the market. Since 2002, for example, we have the traditional schools as Columbia, MIT, Harvard, offering short courses on online platform. We have the mocks uh, already of offering a lot of courses. We have different formats for traditional MBA, MBAs that puts together uh, in personal meetings uh, and online models also uh, and combine a synchronous week and synchronous and intensive meeting and so on. Uh, in Brazil, we have online courses uh, bring, bringing partnerships between several institutions like academic and business institutionals, international part partnerships uh, being developed to develop this kind of product also. Uh, and we have large uh, educational institutions offering 
the synchronous the asynchronous course courses on a very intensive way and it's very important because we have a, a lack of talents in our country and we need to to develop people so uh, for me any initiative of people development deserves attention uh, so the logic is not necessarily the the big certification that we have but we have small certifications also being valorized like like we call micro certification that you give a, a diploma for every small achievement and young students like that to put on their curriculum and this also works uh, we have players like google hubspot youtube also offering courses now linkedin so uh, we have the academy terra boot camps the academy for example uh, present themselves like the academy is not something really adequate to the practice so we need to have another kind of training uh, of course I'm, I'm, i have a tendency to discuss this but i i, I don't I want to know what is really being constructed but it's another kind of discussion we have consulting firms entering on the educational sector we have publishers like agacm management also giving training we have new players such as this complica and many professionals uh individually offering also content and new courses in LinkedIn and all in other places. Executives listening to audiobook, to podcasts on this micro learning process. And guys, we need to, to, to think that it's not just a, uh, something that is going to challenge us, but it's a nice opportunity because uh, I was on a, on a table from Ampadi today, there is the Association of Postgraduate Education in Management in Brazil. And we were discussing this, the, the kind of relevance and how can we really achieve relevance. There is a discussion that has 20 years, but we still uh, have a kind of academia that uh, reinforce the cycle of the academia, produce knowledge to the to academic decisions and uh, do not open the, the content that we provide, uh, that we develop to provide them to, to enterprises. So it was a good discussion because I believe that with, if you see these opportunities, we can do uh, something more interesting with our research. We can start to do research on management information systems that can be uh, not just an academic paper, but can be uh, also discussed on a podcast that can be produced on a video that can organize an, an event to discuss the findings that we have, uh, that we have a, a, a live uh, something on the Internet to discuss. So we have a lot of possibilities to expose and to add value to our society. Uh, and we have also like the, the room from Harvard Business School uh, being transformed with the technological framework that we have. Soft skills is something that really got on an emergent way. I think, uh, especially after the pandemic, it was really important because people is getting crazy. We are working, working, like rats under the, the the hole that they have and just working and not taking care of ourselves so if you, i think it's really important to think about soft soft skills and it's addressed by many players as a manaki hyper and traditional players guys sorry by not sharing the the other experience from latin america uh, if you have please just put on the chat or come in interrupt me and see you, you can give examples too, okay? Uh, so, with the pandemic, a lot of institutions announced that they're going to expand their online portfolio, even for hybrid programs. When we talk about hybrid programs, something that we are starting to learn about it. We bought equipment, we've entered the classrooms, we are trying to, to, to have a correspondence of what we had and now what we have as a hybrid classroom. But it's something beautiful. It's something that we are going to, to construct right now and to understand how can we have a hybrid classroom that is the best that we can have. So it's something really good for us. Uh, we still have a discussion about the value of the face-to-face -face experience. We have guys that is in love with the asynchronous uh, education. At Copiage, we, we obligate that everybody has the camera on because we believe that it's important to discuss seeing each other and you get involved when you, when you are with your face on. Uh, but it works for some people and it doesn't work for another guys that prefer to have the contact. 
For example, uh, my school is on a 20 minutes from the center for downtown of Rio, and some guys prefer to not go there and just watch the, the class and participate by Zoom. It's okay. But some guys really want to be there because they believe that they are better to construct a network on a physical presence. So let's let's give the, 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 the students the possibility to do what is better for, for them. Uh, so I think you're going to have a good reinvention of the classroom with this. Uh, that's the the forecast from Harvard. It's in 30 years that we are going to have 90% of the university closing their doors. Catastrophic, I don't believe so. But the point is that how would the industry be affected by the pandemic? Uh, what's going to be the, the commercial movements of these, these, these institutions? What challenges opportunities that we have considering the geographic expansion that we have? Uh, opportunities for the digital transformation for education. For me, it's really important now that we solidify the knowledge obtained. When I wrote the paper, it was interesting because I, I wrote the paper with other professors from Copiagi. I was also the main character of the paper. It was a little bit strange, but I think it was important for us to stop, to pay attention to what we've learned on that uh, year, what, how we, we could evolve to, to discuss about the next steps. Of course, the portfolio of a school needs to be completely changed. The method can be completely changed. But uh, how about the content? Let's discuss this later. But the content for me is something that is amazing to think about. Uh, the digital transformation uh, that the COVID-19 provided us also uh, it was an opportunity to develop an image of innovation, to develop new partnerships, to learn with the hybrid classrooms. But let's just see the new skills that we have on the market after the, the, the pandemic. What we don't know, for me, it was very clear that we don't know a lot of things on coordination and integration. We thought that we know it was not true. Coordination was poor. We saw the public policies being divested on this pandemic. We saw a, a lack of capability to integrate uh, areas. Uh, of course, we have some areas that did really well when we're talking about the development of vaccines. Vaccines, is that in English? Vaccines? Sorry. Yeah, vaccines, yeah. Vaccines. So it, it, it happened very fast. Science was had a good potential for integration, but we have uh, products and thoughts in the market, and we have the, the transparency about how dependent it, we were as a country on other countries like China, and it's something that we needed to rediscuss. Uh, I think we don't have a systemic perspective, uh, a systemic perceiveness of our environment. I think we really, we can read really bad our environment. We could not understand what was going on uh, how deep the crisis would be, so we need to, and I think we, we still have a lot of uh, things that we don't perceive on the pandemic, and it will take some years to understand this uh, as a society. Soft skills really matter, as I told you, people are getting crazy, so I think we need to, to really develop this, to be more, to have an equilibrium between our personal lives, between work, to have a a clear mind about our objectives, to have empathy, to have capability for communication, and so on. And the digital transfer, uh, transformation was accelerated on many, many sectors, and we need to prepare people for that. So let's talk about the changing nature of work. Uh, I concentrate myself on uh, the World Bank report from 2019 that has exactly this name, the change in nature of work. That's why I'm repeating this during the presentation. And it's an amazing report. I really recommend that everybody take a look because it's really well developed. Um, we have the discussion about, uh, the historical discussion about how uh, the technology will change society with the, the bad view of technology. There is going to say that it's going to uh, kill all the jobs and we have the possibility to construct better jobs with the, the technology. It's an old discussion. I think we have workers understand, uh, understanding that the routine texts that are codifiables, they are, of course, vulnerable. They are going to disappear. 
uh, but we have the possibility also to create new jobs, to increase productivity, to deliver effective public service, and to work on a smart way. So, for innovation, technology generates new tasks, new sectors, new business, new business models. We have the 5, 5G, for example, arriving, and I believe that a lot of new business is going to be developed by based on a kind of technology that do not have the, the time of transmission that it needs to to wait, but it's instant. So we are going to, to have good opportunities with this. When we talk about the the changes that we had, we can see that the, for example, have on the orange line, the Alibaba uh, growth, that it was amazing to see how fast it was. And we have the Walmart growth and we have the Ikea growth. So we can see how fast things is being, uh, and, and how things is being accelerated with this nature with these changes uh, so the digital technology will allow firms to scale up and down quickly blurring the, the boundaries uh, between firms it's interesting because when we see uh, a, a global platform of course the problem is that we have a uh, little uh, a, a small number of people controlling this platform but we can also aggregate a small business uh, on a global way and they were not able to to achieve their consumers so I think we have good possibilities on this so these platforms allow us to reach more people quickly than ever before we have individual and firms uh, connecting each other's connecting services via these platforms so I'm very optimistic about this I think we can use this as a developing country to, to kind of to, to have a kind of uh, development for small enterprises people that are just starting and uh, finding a place where they can show their products and so on. Uh, but of course, we need to, to, change, to, to, to train people and to develop them uh, capabilities to, for, to, to be an entrepreneur, to, to develop the kind of knowledge that they need to have to use these platforms. So I think investing in human capital needs to be a priority. We have three uh, kinds of skills that we need to, to develop. The advanced cognitive skills, such as complex problem solving, because machines are not going to do that, at least under the, the next few years. We have the social behavior skills like teamwork. Machines are not social, or they are not uh, their material. So we need to, to develop the, the kind of capability that they cannot offer. And we have skills combinations that are uh, predictive of adaptability, such, such as reasoning and self-efficacy. So uh, we have a lot of skills to be developed to, to train the, the labor force uh, to the new reality. One thing that this report presents is that we need to, to create formal jobs because the informal market uh, is really big on developing countries and the informal sector doesn't have access to technology. Uh, they have poor uh, skills, they are not well developed. So the, the effort to, to create formal jobs is important because of that. And we also need to develop infrastructure because when you think about the internet, the road, the port, the, infra the municipal infrastructure, these need to be developed. I cannot produce uh, something in the middle of the country and have a, a logistic cost really uh, big to change, uh, to, to send this abroad. So we need to develop the, the logistics to help this development. So it's just a, a sum up what, what we have been discussing. Uh, we are going to have challenging skills, new business models. We need to develop public policies to manage the direction and, and effect, the effect of these changes. We need to invest on human capital, strength, social, social protection, because social protection is important on countries that has a very big disparity of social and economic level. We need to mobilize revenues to be in the to, to, to generate revenue and these revenues need to be on the right places. Uh, we need to have social inclusion like uh, service provision, fair taxation uh, regulations, voice to people to include them on the discussion. And the goal is to prepare people to have competitive mar markets and to have new social contracts. This is an example about the informality that I was uh, discussing. Brazil, for example, has uh, a big informality is something that we need to, to try to avoid. 
So we need to, uh, to rely on the new technology to try to better use the capital, to overcome information barriers, outsource and, and innovate. And we need to manage people uh, on a more efficient way. Uh, workers in some sectors benefit handsomely from the technological progress. Of course, the, the digital transformation, sorry by repeating this expression, but I think it's the best that we have, uh, will not occur uh, homogeneously among different sectors, will not occur homogeneously among different countries. So we need to, to, to see the pace, the rhythm of the development uh, on our reality to try to, to benefit from the opportunities and to, to, post, to, to pass the challenges that we have. Uh, something that uh, is really on my mind is, because, is, is the position of Brazil in, in this discussion and probably the, the, the position of the whole Latin America and the Caribbean area because we have a kind of investment, for example, in uh, artificial intelligence and big data and so on, there is not the same from the developed countries, but we have some, so this, is, this will arrive. Probably we are uh, considering the economic challenges that we have caused by the pandemic, uh, postponing some investments that we need to have, but we need to have this. We need to prepare people for the new reality because it's going to arrive. And we, when we postpone also the technological development, of course, we are postponing our, our economic growth and something that we need to pay attention. Young workers, of course, they're going to be more affected by the automation than the older, so we need to, to prepare these guys for this. Employment on the technological sector, of course, we are going to have. We have a lot of demand from people from IT. Uh, that's a good news for the guys that are not on business school here, but more associated to tech courses. We, we are going to have jobs for you guys. Uh, and what more? We have also some uh, good examples of uh, opportunities being created on the gig economy. Andela is an enterprise from the United States that's training software developers in Africa. And after that, the, these guys became their clients. So it's a kind of model that you help the development of a society to generate demand for you. It's interesting. Uh, so for us, the, the premium is that we need to rise uh, and to develop skills that are not replaced by robots. Of course, we need to develop this kind of thing. Uh, technology, of course, will change uh, how we work. And we need to, to think about us as a, a management information system area. What is the responsibility that we have to foster the development of uh, this, this, this person? Uh, and it's not just about the technical aspects, but some of us, we are working on business schools and we need to integrate the knowledge that we develop with other uh, areas of management to develop the society in this way. When you take a look, for example, on the Human Capital Index, uh, we see the positions of some uh, Latin America countries and we know that we can advance a lot. We sometimes, uh, especially for Brazilian guys, I think we, we got sometimes scared and uh, also worried about the position that we have in this kind of ranking because we have a, a big population but a lot of people not well educated and it's it's putting our society back uh, so in many developing countries uh, the share of employment in high skill occupation has increased for example we have the, the bolivia here appearing uh, chile also but in some economies uh, the the Big part, biggest part of the population is still working on uh, low level, the low skills occupations. We need to, to, to see that on schools, we are most of the time working with uh, young guys, with people that has the whole ability to learn, that they can produce knowledge on a, on a good way, that they are uh, fresh. So we need to, to take care of these guys. And uh, now entering on the last part of my presentation, talking about the Global Talent Competitive Index. Uh, take a look on this. It's really interesting that we can see that some activities are only woman-only activities. We have some activities that are machine-only activities, and we have some activities that match machine and people. So what we need to, to develop, we need to develop leadership, empathize, 
the capability of creation, the capability of judgment. So uh, we need to train, we need to explain, we need to sustain. So that's the kind of thing that we are discussing. When you talk about the competitive talent uh, index, here we have the country, the, the score that the country had, the position on the overall ranking and the group ranking. Chile is, is the first one on our group, but it's the 34th country on the, the global ranking about how how this country is compet competitive based on the countries that we on the talents that they have. If you see, for example, Brazil, we have we are on the 11th position of the, the Latin America ranking, but on the 80th position, exactly almost exactly on the middle uh, for the talent competitiveness. And you can also find your your country here. I hope I put all the that I could I could do, but you can see. What, what, how is, it, is the position of your country? Here's the readiness for artificial intelligence in Latin America. Uh, the, the darkest blue is the, the most uh, developed countries on artificial intelligence. And the, the clear blue is the country that still needs to develop this capability. But we know that when, when you compare the investments for artificial intelligence, for example, in Brazil, uh, to the investments of the United States and China, we still have a lot of work to do. Uh, here is the main challenge in the, uh, to develop the artificial intelligence in Latin America. We are going to talk about the technology adoption and investments as the, the biggest challenge, but we still have the talent, the talent and the business model uh, as some challenges. At least we have more data. The countries that goes better on these are United States and China, as I told you, and we still have a good room for improvement on that. Here's the institutions that we have that works uh, with artificial intelligence on the better way in Latin America. Congratulations if, there, if we have people here from these institutions. Uh, and some social behavior skills that are becoming more important uh, with the, the development of, of artificial, intelligence, uh, artificial intelligence, you can read this by the end of the, the blue box. But you can see, for example, that you have positive attitudes and good communication skills, ability to work independently, and also as a part of a team, uh, competent level on IT proficiency, four-year university degree with at least two years of experience uh, happening on on the countries investigated. Some questions for us. How can we foster digital transformation on different sectors? How can we help our countries to achieve a higher level of digital transformation on a good way, on a way that try to not exclude people, but that uh, make people uh, prepared to, to work with this transformation? How can developing countries use these opportunities to reduce inequality? Which kind of infrastructure you must develop it to help business to grow? How do we define a relevant research agenda for digital transformation? A, 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 an agenda that is really aligned to the developing uh, the, the, the needs for the development of these countries. What do we need to teach? Who must study management information systems? I think it's a group much bigger than we used to have. Emerging topics on this change, I think, is ICT for D, ICT as uh, information and communication technology for development, privacy and cybersecurity is something that we need to develop on a, on a fast way. Digital platforms, digital transformations, artificial intelligence, 5G. What else? Thank you, Lenny, for sharing your experience and your insights and and. Uh, these all your reflections uh, that came to your mind uh, well during this period and probably before that, but uh, that you res resume in an hour and something, an hour and a half. So thank you very much. I think it was very interesting to us to have a broad discussion here. I don't see any uh, questions on the chart. I don't know if somebody wants to have. Uh, yes, the chart. Right. Alexander, uh, first I, of I all, have... I would like to, to say yeah. that I I run a lot. I was I was not able to see my my clock, and I was really thinking that I was late. So I'm sorry because I I talked on a 
on a festival that I planned. <laughs> I, I think we're fine. Uh, I think we're all a very, this is a topic that interested uh, all of us. And, and I noticed that two people were regretting that they had to leave before time. And they said, go well, make sure that we have the recording afterwards because this affects us all, right? Uh, as of course, we're all either we're workers in education. Some of us uh, here, some among the students intend to become workers in education as well, because ma many people that do a master's or a doctorate is, uh, are planning to become uh, teachers and professors afterwards. Uh, and, uh, and anyway, we're all affected uh, by the way that uh, uh, technology, technology and the pandemic now uh, uh, have, have uh, changed our lives and, and this digital transformation that you were sort of I noticed that you were a little, you didn't want to use the, the, the expression digital transformation often, but it, it's, it's, in our, it's, it's in our mouth all the time now, because um, as I claimed last week that we've been doing digital transformation at least since the 90s, but there's, there was nothing like the pandemic to push this uh, further and much, uh, much faster. Uh, the, the question that I had, uh, well, it's not even, I'm not sure if it's a question, but I, I remember that a few years ago, uh, maybe some five years ago, uh, Guillermo Rodriguez invited me uh, for a conference in, in Mexico and uh, Professor Jeff Dick from Australia. At that stage, uh, Jeff was already in the United States, but he was also there. And he gave us a talk that went sort of in the same direction as yours, in the sense that uh, he was discussing ways in which technology was pushing education towards uh, different avenues, let's say. Huh? But, but he was very focused at that stage on MOOCs, right? And uh, me, I don't know if it's because we're Latin Americans and we need face-to-face uh, -face, uh, contact and everything. I said, you know, this guy, well, I, I can't say that very loud because I, I, I just had the idea of maybe inviting uh, Jeff Dick to come and give us a talk uh, on that. Uh, we, we, we have one date, you, you know, that we have one date that we don't have a, a speaker there yet. If, if, if he can fit in his agenda, I will invite him to come and talk to us uh, about his perspectives for the future. But it, it looked to me as being very Anglo-Saxon in the sense that he was saying our schools, and of course, he, he was also in a, in, in a in working with information systems in a business school in the United States. Uh, so he was concerned with the impact of MOOCs. And I said, OK, yeah, but MOOCs are training. I looked at it and I said, OK, MOOCs are good for training. People need education. They need perspective. They need uh, discussion. They, they need this kind of things that you said that you try to do in a, a little boutique, uh, uh, let's say, university program. Uh, where you say, we have these people with us and we want to look uh, in their eyes and, and talk as humans. And that was the impression I had then, that we as universities would possibly not take that track. Of course, it would it would challenge us because, uh, and many, and maybe mainly for all those students that are here with us uh, from uh, computer, let's say, computer-oriented programs, I know that for them, many times, there are things that when, when, when we're referring to training, it's better to take a MOOC uh, at Coursera or uh, some or or or, or in any way take any of these other uh, programs that are even offered by companies than doing something at the university. However, uh, I think there's plenty of room. And I, I was thinking here during your your talk uh, that you know before the pandemic, uh, I mean we were already trying to experience with things like this, right? But you know the way we were doing it, uh, I mean we had the speaker and uh, whoever was interviewing or presenting the speaker on. A, a talk on, a, on, on, on the same room, let's say, even if it was a virtual room, and then we would broadcast it through YouTube for the audience. And the pandemic at least made me notice that we were completely wrong with, with respect to that. Uh, that the way to do is, I mean, even if we have a hundred little faces here in front of us, this is the way to do because everyone who's here, even those who do not have their cameras on, and I agree with you that cameras on is is a must for full communication. So. For everyone who, who doesn't have the camera on there, whenever it, whenever it's possible, do it because it improves the dialogue a lot. But we're still, I mean, when we're doing it this way, there's always still di a dialogue happening, even if it's someone talking and someone just thinking about what that person is, is saying, because we are face to face, of course, mm -hmm. in a weird electronic way, but we are face to face. Uh, and uh, and I, I don't know why we had not gotten that before. We, we needed the pandemic so that we learned that we have to look at each other, even if there's only one person who's talking and the others are listening, that is already a dialogue. If it's if only one can talk, then it became a monologue, right? But if, if anyone can open their mic, even if they don't, it's already a dialogue. That's my impression. So I would like to know uh, if, if, if in, in, in the experience that you reported here, if, you, if, if that was what you felt as well, and, and, and if you think that education is going that way, you know, even if we are doing it electronically. Uh, Alexander, we are 100% aligned. Uh... 
We did a, a big research in 2019 at Copiade to try to understand the changes on education because we were scared about how things were changing so fast. So we took a year uh, coordinated by Professor Roberta, Guimara, Roberta Campos to, to discuss this and to, she did a good job. She did focus groups, she interviewed executives, she organized an, an event with different uh, initiatives for executive education. And we started discussing and thinking about this. We've got a conclusion that we, th that was the first slide that I presented, that we have the two groups, uh, like arrows that I, I put on the slide, that we have the guys that are beginning and they need to, to be similar to each other, they need tools, and we have the guys that are on the managerial level, on C, the C levels, on the directors, uh, that they need to develop a kind of knowledge that a mock cannot develop. A mock is something uh, oriented to tools. When you go to the conceptual thinking, I know that we need to develop critical thinking, analytical capability. We cannot develop this without discussion, without eyes on eyes. That's why I'm, I say that we need to, to open cameras because of this. We need to discuss uh, face to face and to, to have a reflection, to have engagement on the discussion so we can develop this kind of uh, knowledge because it's related also to our relate to our be be behaviors to what we believe as a an individual so i think we have rooms for every kind of training but uh, some kind of media are more related to something that we need to develop it and other ones are have, have other objectives and we need to to organize well this because if you don't do this, we are going to develop something that it's not true, it's not fair, it's not honest. So we need to plan our our courses considering this. I, I tried to, to develop a Coseta program on 2018. I give up. It, it was not me. It was not what I bring to the classroom. I, I need to have discussion. What the, the, My public is not the, the public that works for tools. I, I know that everybody needs tools. For me, sometimes I, I need a tool and I will study this. For example, I'm studying R. I, it's a tool. I need to, to learn that. For this, a mock can, can help me and I will also go to structured courses because, of course, I'm a, I believe on this. But I think we have uh, different medias for different objectives of education. Thank you for your question. I think Andrea and then Rogério. Andrea, you have your... Hi. First okay. of all, congratulations for your work and your commitment to the students. And it was very inspiring to read your story because it was a story, right? It was really engaged, really enjoyed it. So congratulations. I think we need more professors and more teachers like that who put the students in the center of the discussion, of the discussion and give them a platform and voices to listen to what they need. So it was very, very inspiring. Congratulations. Thank you. And, <laughs> my question is, um, the trend report you presented is from 2019, right? Perfect. Uh, sorry? Good point. Perfect. Good point. <laughs> so uh, I'd like to know uh, which of the trends uh, mentioned you think were the most accelerated by the pandemic, do you think? Because in, to, in 2019, we had a different scenario, although the path was digitalization and stuff. But what I think as a trend researcher that I am is that the pandemic accelerated futures, right? And I'd like to know which ones from that list do you think are the most accelerated right now, the, more, the most mature, let's put this way. Thank you. Andrea, I really like the question. It's amazing because it's challenging and I think you've got the, the main point of this report. When you're, going to, when you're thinking about digital transformation, I think we have the, the gaps of investments between countries, between organizations, between big uh, organizations and small ones. And uh, we were on a, on a curve like that of investments uh, accelerating. And I think the, the pandemic just stop at this a little bit, a little bit, a little bit, to bring people that were not really concerned about digital transformation, to to put on the discussion people that were postponing this like 
I'm uh, concentrated on other things, on other strategic objectives, but now I needed to do that urgently, like OPAD did. So I think we had the opportunity to, to everybody together have a pace together. And now, of course, we need to still advance together. Uh, I think organizations are now getting more organized. They can understand how can work on a, on a virtual environment on a productive way, at least not so unproductive. And now they can uh, reinvest on the digital transformation that they, they started. Most of us, of course, there are some organizations that uh, kept the reaching that they have like digital platforms and sometimes they could they had opportunities like on KU to accelerate this um, as they did not uh, it was not previewed but uh, we have now uh, a lot of people coming together on a on a step uh, further from for this what does it mean I think the I put the, this report here even considering that it was a, a report that wrote uh, before the pandemic because I think the, the, the needs that they, they present, especially for Latin America, is perfectly up to date. Because we need to develop critical thinking, analytical skills. We need to develop kids. We do not invest on the, the, the first uh, infancy uh, education. And it, it, when the kid has, uh, until five years, they are going to develop the soft skills on a, on a faster way, do you believe that we can develop soft skills for adults? Of course you can, but it takes a lot of time because you need to change the, the guy. And when you go to kids, it's like that. It's the first time you present, they are going to, to catch the idea and they're going to be uh, developed, to be modeled by this kind of feeling. So uh, we have during the pandemic, kids out of school without food because they need to go to school to eat. So which kind of society we are developing now? Uh, a society that, where kids are not at school and a society where kids were with food problems. Again, something that we, we solved or at least minimized during the last years, but now so, so fresh on our society. So I think we need to, to pay attention. I think the pandemic just accelerated the movement and I think we have deeper problems now with the pandemic and if you don't take a look on that, if you don't move, we are going to be, as, a, as countries, under uh, losing competitiveness. Yeah, I think the, the, the gap between rich countries and poor countries and, and like developed economies and, and in development economies, it's just, it, it has a broadened with the pandemic. I mean, it's, it's really sad. Yeah. But thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, I, I agree with you. Uh, of course, it's not like a, a, a trend report is valid in, two, in 2019 and it's not valid anymore two <laughs> years later. It, it, it's not like that. But uh, all the trends are super relevant, of <laughs> course. But what I see is that the pandemic was like this accelerator and people are like, oh, my God, where do I go now? But again, very nice. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your question. Thank you, Andrea. Uh, Rogério? Uh, hi. Uh, uh, well, uh, thanks for the, the presentation, Elaine. And uh, let me uh, do a brief uh, uh, presentation of myself. Uh, uh, my name is Rogério Mello, and uh, it's the first uh, seminar I'm uh, watching live. I had uh, 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 I had another the, another seminar that I watched uh, uh, the, the, the recording. And uh, very proud to be to be here, and uh, thank you, thanks for uh, the invitation, uh, Professor Marianne and Professor Alexandre. And uh, I'm, a I'm a listener at uh, Copiage, willing to uh, to get into the program uh, next year uh, with uh, Professor Elaine uh, uh, as an advisor. And I, I was was nice to very nice to see the presentation because I, I could uh, say uh, see myself. As a student, because I was uh, say uh, not I'm not in the executive say education, but uh, we are uh, have uh, having the, the PhD classes uh, uh, online as well, and I'm also a teacher for a technology school, which uh, we had uh, this uh, similar say uh, challenge to uh, to get into a, a Zoom platform uh, during the pandemic, 
so uh, it was nice to 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 see the the presentation to see that the challenges are like uh, I say very uh, pretty similar and but I, I'm I'm was uh, wondering uh, when you uh, you knew when you said about uh, the new movements in education and the new players uh, coming in uh, into the say the the this uh, field uh, I was wondering if uh, uh, with this new say, environment, with this online environment, uh, uh, business schools can uh, somehow uh, share those uh, uh, disciplines uh, uh, because uh, it would uh, it, it was it, it's a great say uh, uh, very nice and great and rich experience uh, uh, if it's possible to uh, uh, to advance this uh, sharing of disciplines. I, me myself, uh, for example, I had the opportunity to. Uh, do some uh, disciplines at uh, another business school, which is uh, FGV, F uh, FGV in, in uh, Sao Paulo, which is another high-level uh, business school. And it was, uh, uh, say, uh, uh, maybe an opportunity that uh, uh, the pandemic and the online, say, uh, environment uh, uh, opened it because uh, otherwise it would, it would be more difficult to get, I'm, I'm, I'm in Rio de Janeiro, to, to get to, to Sao Paulo every week uh, to have classes. So uh I, I would like to 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 if you if you could can uh, say some words about that and thank you very much again for the presentation thank you Rogério. Rogério, for me it's amazing it's what alexandre is fostering here like uh, he had the, the, the idea of uh putting people together to to discuss i think it's much more rich than a, a classroom from an unique institution I think when you, we are uh, educated on an institution, we, we, we incorporate the face of this institution. We have, uh, we have a lot on our personality on the, about the, uh, regarding the institution that, we, that educated us. And when we think about uh, an experience like that, that is a pilot uh, for something that we can develop in a bigger way. Uh, it's interesting because we have diversity, we have different points of views, we have inclusion of other perspectives, we have different realities, we have a bigger understanding of the things. So I think that's the natural way. And not only academic partnership, because it was so obvious, why didn't we did that before? It's just because we were afraid of Zoom, <laughs> just because of that. You know, Elena, Elena, I don't think we have to be that cruel on us. Uh, uh, maybe Zoom, Zoom was only good enough maybe two or three years before the pandemic, right? Uh, yeah. I remember that the, 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 what we had was, for example, Skype. And Skype was horrible to have three or four people together. Uh, so, I mean, the tools appeared in good time for us to, to survive the pandemic, but they yeah. allow us to think much broader things in the future. This is uh, what Rogério uh, is claiming here. I mean, Marie, Marie, Elaine, and me, and we have, I don't know if Violet is, is with us right now. I know she was here earlier uh, at USP several universities in brazil we, we've been trying to arrange this for example these seminars to be a a like a course that is taught by different universities and where you, you can get uh, let's say uh, credits from the different universities of course we're all stuck with legislation and fortunately at utfpr we are uh, at least i don't know if it's because uh, many times i ask for uh, excuses than, than for permission i think we, we were uh, we, we we are a little more open so for example as i can enroll anyone in in this class i say you are my if, if, if you don't if you don't belong to a, to a university you are my student come here take the credits i don't know if your university is going to accept it later right uh but if we if we don't start pushing these things uh they will never happen so this is this what we're doing here is an attempt of something that it, that seems obvious to all of us but that still needs to, to go much further Hopefully in the future, each each professor here, and we have several professors in, 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 in this group right now here. I, I, I can't see all their, their, their faces because some of them are hiding below as they, they're not showing their, their faces. And I've seen even some of the, our Latin American uh, colleagues uh, uh, that, that were there with us. All of us could have in the future hybrid classes that were available to students from any other Latin, America, uh, Latin American um, university. And they would accept those students and they would say, well, we'll give you credits if, if you, of course, you have to take the exams and do all those uh, things. Uh, and, and we would have to plan to do that electronically for this who are not face to face, even when we, we're back to face to face. But that's a great opportunity for students from different universities to maybe study with a specialist on a topic because he's teaching that in Rio de Janeiro and the guy lives in Curitiba, for example, or lives in Lima or in, in, in Santiago or, or anywhere else. Right. So we have to insist on this. Uh, it, it, 
it demands a lot of work. It demands pushing against our bureaucracies in universities. I know the effort that Elaine and, and Mahi were doing there at uh, at uh, at uh, Copiage also uh, to try and include this as a let's say as a, a course that students could get credits for. Uh, but this is the way we 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 we, we plan we, we plan to go. At least we, we want to signalize that this is a possibility for our communities in information systems. And and the, the other good thing here is we we have people from business and also from applied computing and, and other and, 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 and computer science. Where else would we have all these people together in the room? Right. That's cool. Go ahead, go ahead Mahi. Yeah, Alexandre, I, I try to remember the, uh, the second isla at Puki. Remember that we try, and I remember in that moment that we, we tried to make this um, uh, a conference, online conference, it was 2016, I think, around that. And then uh, I remember they say, oh, I can, uh, why we are still so uh, um, delay on video conference? Because, we, you know, we try, we have several technical problems in that moment. And we say, it's amazing that in 2016, we didn't have any Zoom in that moment. <laughs> Something like oh, that. So, so this is why I'm telling you, we shouldn't yeah. be too so hard now, on ourselves, you know? Exactly. That's what I want to say, that we, tried, ago, and we have tried uh, before. In several moments, I think this idea of research seminar uh, uh, was created before the pandemic, and during the pandemic, we could uh, implement this. So I, I think that this is um, something that I want. I, I want to, uh, as I have the the, the the talk right now, I, I want to make some comments about uh, Elaine's uh, presentation. Uh, firstly, of course, um, it was great. And I think many many questions arise. I don't know, if probably we are not going to have time to, to talk and then discuss all of them. Um, but I I have some of them uh, that is related to my personal experience and I, as I have a, a teenager at home and uh, as I can, uh, and probably most, several of you have also some experience with teenagers or, uh, during this pandemic period. And we have seen that uh, how they deal with homeschooling and it's amazing how they deal with that and sleeping the, uh, on the, in the bed and of course I, I'm, 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 I have to agree that they are, it's not their, directly their fault because we were not the, the teachers were not prepared to teach online. We have already and Eleni makes this um, explanation before that we try to transfer directly what we do uh, presentially on the online and, and many of teachers and professors didn't have these skills to, to develop and to adapt to this but my, my point here is that uh, they, they create their own dynamic, dynamic uh, to, uh, to follow the, uh, this homeschooling. So they record and then listen to the, the videos faster, you know, and, and, and these kind of things. And, um, and I, I, I wonder how this uh, uh, amount of uh, teenagers then, I don't know, in 10 years or maybe less, they will be working. Probably less than uh, yeah, six, uh, around five years, they will be working in some way, and uh, how they will deal with. Uh, we have to receive these people on the on the work, and how we are going to to deal with this way uh, of this dynamic that, that they developed during this pandemic, and then and I'm just talking about work. But if we, I don't want you to, to mention how we are going to deal at the university because we have a here. I think that the problem is bigger. I don't know if it's bigger, but it's, it's quite a, it's quite great a problem. So I think we have not so much time to be prepared for the next, I don't know, five years to have to receive these people uh, at the univers in our universities and uh, in, in the workplaces. And um, I think that is something very um hard it will be very hard because they in, in some moments they lose um this in part the the network not not that work but the personal uh, involvement from and they were teenagers you know they they, they if you remember when you was five if, uh, 15 years old or 16 years old do you remember that probably in the school do you were you know deal with uh home that's school. low that's yeah that is low everybody knows uh and um so but when we were 15, 15 years old, we, we have this interaction with our colleagues. So the, the good point on the school was not the classes, but the meeting, the, the breaks and so, but they lose that. So they, and we have different teenagers right now, probably, I don't know exactly what psychology problems that they're going to face, but uh, this is, and, and they will be working, you know, they will be on, uh, working 
probably I believe that most of them going to uh, they will prefer to choose works that they can do uh, work uh, at home that can they they, they can uh, make home office and probably they will feel more productive at home since they learned how to work at home uh, in parsecs you know in in, the, in this uh, in this situation that we are living right now so. I think we have we're going to face if uh, a generation problems in the next few years on the workplaces and and how we are going to uh, develop how how we're going to be prepared for that. This is it's just some you know uh, ideas that came in my mind listening Elaine uh, and uh, it's not exactly a question it's just some um, insights and I have another point but uh, per perhaps we can discuss this and then we go further. I don't know. No, we have to still have time. So. Mahi, that's that's a really interesting point. Uh, for me, it can be just my impression, and I can be totally wrong. I will know this in a few years. But I believe that in some way, the pandemic saved the generation. It was a generation that had everything on their hands, that uh, the family, everybody was really helpful and try to, to bring a, a good environment and try to do something that was artificial. Life is not like that. And they were shocked about how life can be difficult and how do they need to, to find ways to, to be fine during the, the, the worst moment that we, we lived in our lives. So I think this in some way could save the generation. Or create resilience on them. Yeah, kind of. <laughs> of course. This comes together with depression, with people That's that right. are anxious and everything. But as a generation, probably when they are grandpas and grandmas, they are going to talk about this with their sons and say, guys, come on, what you are living now, stop <laughs> complaining. I, I was in a room for one year and a half when I was a teenager. Stop complaining. So maybe this can help. I think that imprisoned uh, in your own house, right? In your own home. <laughs> exactly. With your parents. With, with your parents. Home. With the parents. Yeah. With the parents. <laughs> with the and parents. sometimes the grandparents. <laughs> and with different kinds of homes. Let's be honest. Yeah. And also, exactly. uh, they had opportunity to learn. Of course, it was not the ideal and what was uh, planned, but some opportunities, and they are going to to work. I'm very worried about the guys that had just started to work during the pandemic. They had started to work on the first job that I think is something that will model your personality as a worker. And they found uh, something that is virtual, that they don't have the same kind of interaction that we have. And they need to deal with this. Probably they are going to take more time to to get their worker uh, in identity format. But it will happen. Uh, I think they are going to understand the, the significance of no boundaries. Something that we are discussing for several years, but they know that we don't have boundaries and they, we can find uh, ways to, to be together without being physically together. That's, that's interesting. And I think uh, something that really was surprising for me was the fact that we expected a lot for them uh, with the digital stuff, we we thought that they would be really fine with this, and they were not. They were not because they are human beings, and human beings need people, and we need to be together. At least, as Alexandre told in Latin America. Well, you know, I remember when my son, who was uh, well before the pandemic, was uh, 13 or 14. Now he's turning 16 in a week. Uh, uh, he would rush home from school because he wanted to play with his school friends on a let's say electronic device and i said why don't you stay at school then and i said no it's it's more fun to do it electronically well yeah. now they, they've reversed that i think <laughs> they probably have a different idea by now yeah <laughs> anyway. but i think when they arrive uh for us as students uh, at our universities or on the job market they're going to to have this experience as we also had and they're going to bring some knowledge about this and they're going to valorize soft skills because they they know uh, what is depression. They know what, at least what is a, a depression on their colleagues. And they are going to be more prepared for that. And when we are, I think we need to stop to, to be worried about conflict generation, 
Uh, I think when we talk about diversity, it's amazing because we think about race, we think about uh, sexual orientation, we think a lot of, we, we, we discuss a lot of things, but we don't uh, pay the attention about conflict generation. And I, I'm, I missed my point here. I think we need to, to take... Uh, but, but I think I got your point. Yeah, we, we should also think discuss that kind of diversity and say, look, we have to be more patient with people that are different to us simply because they were born at a different uh, time, right? Perfect. They are not the same as us because they are young and the oldest are not the same as us. And we need to include everybody because the oldest can uh, bring a lot of experience, can give, can have a point of view that, for example, when we see a, a, an old executive uh, sharing experience, it's amazing. It's much more than an EAO, an EAO MBA. It's life MBA. And they have the young, the young perspective that is going to challenge us and to put us to think about uh, issues that we never imagined. So let's put people together. Thank you, Alexandre, for translating my <laughs> confusion. Uh, I have a second point, but I, I want to open for anyone else to... to... I, I, I want to take Juan Nascimento thought. He was proposing that we, we need to research on the fruits of digital transformation and not and comparing to the fruits that we get on normal periods, that's amazing. I think we need to stop complaining and see the, the good things that we, we achieved during this crazy period. Of course, we have a lot, a lot to complain, but we did it. Let's move on and see what we've learned. Yeah. Well, we have many other comments here, but I think it was related to what we were talking here. So I did, that's why I didn't mention, I don't know if somebody wants to comment something related to that. But uh, my second point is related to, you know, the digital divide. And I mean, not there are many different kinds of digital divide. And uh, of course, my example, for instance, for my teenager is my, the teenager that is my, my daughter. So of course we have a different, uh, um, social level that most of Brazilian, unfortunately, most of Brazilian have. So, uh, and we see that how they had to face of this period, the pandemic period, and probably we are going to see the, the huge digital divide uh, in, in 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 this in this um, especially the kids that has this uh, access on the school. They didn't have internet access and blah blah blah. I think we are not going to talk about that. But uh, I think we have the digital divide between universities because we have uh, our universities that are, you know, complain and make this uh, shift. Uh, some of them quickly, others delay a little bit, but they, they, they could shift uh, uh, to the online. And, and we, can, we know that this uh, gives a, a very big gap between them. Uh, they already have this gap before. So we, we have these different levels of universities that related to the, the, the training and, 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 and the, the, the from that we see the, 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 how uh, the professors deal with inno innovations and that and but now we can see that this have increased this gap. And I am very worried about this gap related specific gap related to uh, between universities, uh, uh, especially in Latin America. Uh, not only Brazil, but I think that many uh, universities around uh, uh, our countries uh, have faced these very uh, difficult times. And probably, I don't know if they're going to, in the future, they, if they're going to have this hybrid. We, we already know that our universities probably will be hybrid and we have online classes and we're going to create new things. We're already creating here and, and I don't believe that we are going to stop here. We are going to continue keep going, creating new things. But uh, the problem is those who, you know, who remind <laughs> behind us. And, um, and I don't know, it's just one uh, insight uh, that I had um, by listening to Elaine. I don't know if you want to comment something related to that. That's... I would love to. Uh, yeah. I believe that we have institutions. Institutions are made by people. We have different groups of people in different institutions. And so it's natural that we have different conditions. Conditions are not, are not going to be the same, even if consider a small group inside an institution and other group from the same institution. That cannot be an excuse for us to stop and find the ideal solution. I was in the, the work group from the UFRJ 
that discussed the, the return of classrooms on uh, the undergraduation. And I was there because I, I really need, wanted to put things to move on. I don't want us to, to stop and think like, I have 5% of my students that are not able to watch classroom, to watch classes online, but so because of this, I need to stop. No, you need to solve the problems, to help these students to have their problems solved, because you're not going to solve everything. We don't have resources to give a, a tablet for everybody, a, a ship and say, come on guy, now your problem is solved. Let's find together a solution, but we cannot stop. We cannot wait, our society cannot wait for, for uh, being educated because we are still late. So we need to put these guys together and bring them as better as we could. Uh, talking about the, the past, my grandpa was uh, the first guy that got the undergraduate degree in my family. And he was an engineer in arts at because on that time, uh, on the beginning of nine, the 19th century, of the 20th century, uh, the, the graduation was together, engineering and the, the undergraduate. And he was a colleague of Oscar Niemeyer, and he took notes from, the, for, from these classes uh, using the paper that was uh, used to roll the bread that his mother uh, bought. So uh, people don't have the same resources. They, we need to find solutions and we need to solve this to just move on. So we're not, when, when did, we are not talking about the virtual classes and, and technology, some guys still have a lot of necessities that were not filled. We have a, a student at, at UFRJ that used it to sleep at uh, Rodoviaria. How can I say Rodoviaria in English? Road. Or the bus station. Uh, okay. bus station. At, at the bus station because he oh. was from another state. He moved it to Rio and he did not place it at the, the university hotel. So he, he was sleeping at the bus station. Can you see? So this is not about technology. This is about economical conditions. And it's with education that we are going to solve the economic condition of people. We are not going to stop because the conditions are not the same. That's my perspective. I know that sometimes it's not so fair. But I, I was educated, having a scholarship for my whole education and uh, find a way to, to pass every year and, and to, 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 have, to, to deal with the problems that I had in my education because I did not have sufficient, had to, sufficient money to be on the, on the better, one of the best schools of my, my city. But I was there, I found a place and I never complained that I did not have all the resources. I find a way to solve it. I think that's, that's what I need to do. You know, yesterday I was listening, uh, probably the Brazilian knows uh, Trajano, Maria Luisa Trajano. That is Luisa Helena Trajano. Luisa Helena Trajano. This is Magalu, Ma Magazine Luisa. I changed it. Well, she's a, a, is a very big, um, how do you say that? Uh, but it, uh, executive, executive from the retail sector. Retail sector. So she was, okay, was talking about digital transformation and blah, 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 and how they deal with this. Um, and try to engage those who were excluded in, in the sense that everybody uh, can uh, afford uh, the, the things and buy things and be a person and work and so on. And uh, they, they create several interesting solutions in poor regions in the great cities to specific for logistic delivery and so on. And, 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 be, and bring during the pandemic, bring uh, from the, the small uh, um, and micro companies to to, um, to the port of the big portal to sell online and so they, they create several solutions. I think it's, it's, it's in, in line what Eleni say uh, that we, we cannot you know uh, be uh, <laughs> stop it freezing in, in, in when we have a big challenge in our in, in front of us. We have to do something to innovate and to create and technology is a very uh, uh in, interesting tool to, to do that to help us to create this but something that she said that was uh very interesting for me was uh tra digital transformation is the future is the future to, to improve to to challenge to to use technology to challenge uh, our adversities so I, I think that is is online in line what elaine saying that we we cannot be stopped you know freezing in our in our places and and uh, we have to find solutions to trying to to 
uh, pick up these people that are <laughs> behind us and try to bring together, um, trying finding solutions. So I think this is the role of uh, universities. I, I believe, especially in, in the public universities, not only the public. I think the private can do that same. But this, in Brazil, the public university, I think, is the main role of the universities to to find solutions uh, on, on this way. And, and technology um, is, is a very interesting tool to do that. Taking an example of the, the example of Luiz Helena Trajano, she recently created a trainee program here that was for black people. And I've heard the speech for, for her from her, and she explained it, that she just saved some money for the judges process that she would uh, find, because it was obvious that that would we would have some guys that were not, uh, did not agree with that. But she said, I believe it. For me, it was important. So I had just, I just did it and saved money to the, the process, but I, it was part of my investment. I believe that it was important that I did it. I think it's a good uh, way to, to close our seminar here. We need to do as a management information systems professor or research, we need to do what we believe on. We don't need to do research because we are researchers and we are going to produce research for the academia to be on the library. We need to do research to change society on the way that we need to change it on how we'd like the, our society to be. So that's it. Yeah, in, in that way, Eleni, we, we, we will have with, uh, with us uh, Stace Peter uh, later on, I think in late November, who will be talking about this uh, uh, importance of doing research that has value to ourselves uh, and that is, it's not only ethically valuable, but it's valuable because it impacts the world in a way that we transform the world into a, a better place. Uh, uh, well, Elena, would like to thank you very much for, for, for this. Uh, again, we, we talk here for two hours and we don't even notice, uh, but we have to close this. Uh, and before closing, I just wanted to show you uh, and give you some hints of what we're doing next week. Uh, next week, we'll have uh, Eleanor Lo Loyacano with us. Uh, she's from the Mason School of Business, William & Mary United, in the United States. Well, I remember uh, Eleanor Loyacano uh, 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 from the research that I was doing when I was still a, a, a master student, I think, and starting to study e-commerce. Um, Eleanor, at that stage, was de developed the web wall, uh, which is one of the most, uh, even today, a very important uh, tool to assess uh some electronic uh some of our electronic uh, uh tools for for electronic commerce uh she's in a different stage of her life uh, and and research she will be talking about something that we have already uh well mentioned here uh but it's it's something very important in our field the the difference that exists uh in gender uh i mean we we, we are in a in a in a in a let's say dealing with a, a topic that for which gender should not have any impact at all, because uh, I mean we don't we don't need uh, the, the the muscles of very strong men. If we, if we as men were still that strong, my wife says that I'm not useful even to open a a cucumber can, a can any longer. Uh, but she will be uh, discussing with us uh, gender and the information systems discipline. Uh, so you're all very welcome to 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 come back uh, next week. Uh, for this next seminar. Again, thank you very much, Eleni. Thank you very much, Mohi. Thank you very much, everyone. And we'll see you next week. Okay, bye. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Eleni. Thank you. Thank you. See you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye. See you.